Welcome to the Anywhere Office. Hey, Phil Montero from the AnywhereOffice.com here. And in my last video, I showed you how to synchronize your mail, uh, your Gmail, your, your Gmail, your Google Contacts, and your Google Calendars with your iPhone or your iPod Touch. Uh, but those steps assumed that you wanted to use Gmail, your Gmail account, as your primary email address. However, if you would rather use your own domain, uh, for example, when I send mail, I send it from phil at theanywhereoffice.com. So I didn't want it to use my uh, my Gmail address, but instead I wanted to do that. And if to, in order to do that, you have to set up the mail portion differently. The steps that I gave you in the last video on calendars and contacts, those are still the same, but you will set up the actual email portion a little bit differently. Uh, now, this is not if you're using Google Apps for your domain. If you do that, then uh, you will already have uh, your domain embedded there. But I'm talking about if you're a regular plain vanilla Gmail user, but you want to be able to use a different domain that you send and receive from. Uh, so let's take a look at how you do that. Okay, now in this video, I'm going to show you um, how to configure your email on the iPhone or an iPod Touch to use Gmail, but not to use your Gmail address as the primary address. Uh, you may want to use an address for your own domain. For example, my primary email that I use is uh, phil at the anywhereoffice.com. And although I use Gmail as my, as my email client and all of my email comes into Gmail and I have a number of email addresses, I want to send from the phil at the anywhereoffice.com. And I showed you in a previous video and in a previous blog post how to set up the Google Sync here. Um, to do mail, contacts, and calendars. Well, the problem with that is that if you use this mail feature right here, it will force you to send mail as your Gmail account, my philmontero at gmail.com, even if I have Gmail configured differently, and that is a step that you need to take, uh, it will not let, it, it, it will force it. I have Gmail set to send mail by default as philiptheanywhereoffice.com. But when I use this method on the iPhone or the iPod Touch, it still wants to do this. So what we're going to do here is turn off the mail here. Um, and this, if you didn't see these steps, then you can check out my previous video and the other blog post, which would show you how to use the... Uh, the Exchange Sync and the Google Sync connector there to connect to set that up. And instead what we're going to do here is we're going to add a new account. And from this list here, we're not going to choose Gmail. We're going to choose Other at the bottom. And then we're going to click here, Add Mail Account. Now here it's going to ask for some basic information, so I'm going to type in my name the way I want it to appear. my address. Now, the first time you're doing this, you do have to type in your Gmail address. This is kind of tricky because we're going to have to set it up one way, back out, and then change some things. So I'm going to do my Gmail account. And then here, you're going to need to type in your Gmail password. And you can leave right now the description to be Gmail. That's fine. We're going to change all of that later. And then we're going to click Next. And at this point, it's going to look up your account and confirm it. It sees here that it is a Gmail account, and it wants to know POP or IMAP, and you're going to want to use IMAP because that allows you to have complete synchronization between your iPhone and the Gmail account. And this way, if you delete messages or create new messages here, it will do the same on the other one. Now, as we scroll down, we're going to have to fill out the rest of this. And I'll have these steps in a blog post that goes with this, but uh, for host name here, we're going to have to type in IMAP dot gmail dot com and for username here again you need to type in your full gmail address and I'm just gonna copy it from here I'm gonna hold my finger down for a second select all copy and then scroll down here Hold my finger here till paste comes up and paste. So that pastes in my address. And it already has filled in my email address here. So that's all set. Scroll down a little bit more. And now for outgoing server, 
it's going to be smtp.gmail.com. And again, for your username, I'm just going to hold it and paste again. I need to paste in, you need to put in your full Gmail address. And once again, you're going to have to type in your password and click Next. Now for this step to work, and you see it checked everything off here, and it comes here and it asks me if I want mail and notes. I'm not using any kind of notes feature, so I'm going to turn that off for right now. Uh, and I'm just leaving mail on, and I'm going to click Save. Now for this step to work, uh, to be able to send mail from a different address, you would have to take the steps first to go into your Gmail account and set that up. And I've got another video, uh, and you'll see the link in this blog post or below this video, to that video that will walk you through how to set that part up in Gmail. But the key here, and this is where it gets tricky, once you've got this set up, you actually have to back completely out. Click Settings, and I'm going to click the main button at the bottom here to go completely out of Settings. In fact, I actually like to even just go into the Mail app, so I'm just going to click Mail once, let it check my mail, pull any new mail down, it's syncing everything, so there's my mail. I'm going to go back out again. And now we need to go back into settings. If you miss that step, if you don't back completely out before you go back in, none of this is going to work. So we're going to go back into settings. We're going to go back into mail, contacts, and calendars. We're going to go back into the Gmail setting here, and we're going to make two changes. If you click on account here where it says your Gmail address, now you can change this address and this description, both these here, to the address you actually want to send mail from. So I'm going to click up here. I'm going to delete this. And I want to use the mail from my domain, phil at theanywhereoffice.com. Make sure you've typed it right. Again, I'm going to copy this. Select all, copy. I'm going to come down here, delete this, and I'm going to paste it in. And then done. And again, back out. Okay, two more quick changes that you might want to make to complete the full synchronization with, uh, with Gmail. Uh, one is if you scroll down here, um, and you click this advanced option, you'll notice that by default it wants to save your drafts, your sent mail, and your deleted mail on the folders uh, for the mail app on your iPhone. Uh, and instead, if you really want full Gmail synchronization, you'll want draft sent and deleted mailboxes to end up on Gmail, so anything you send from your iPhone you can find when you're looking at your sent mailbox on Gmail. So in order to change that, uh, we're just going to tap drafts mailbox here, and instead of saving that drafts under Gmail here, we're going to tap drafts. See the check mark? And then up here we just go back, click advanced to go back one screen. And we're going to do the same thing with sent mail. We're going to go to sent mail under Gmail and back again. And then deleted mail, uh, this one you'll have to make a choice. Some people like it when they delete mail from their iPhone uh, for it to actually act like you're archiving on Gmail which means, and that's the case, then you'd put all mail. So it's not really deleting, it's just taking it out of your inbox and sticking it in all mail. I instead choose the trash folder, because when I tap delete, and I delete a message on my iPhone, uh, I like to technically be cleaning up my mail and actually delete it, and I've got it set so it doesn't delete messages for 30 days anyway, so uh, it'd still be there if, if I realized I did the wrong thing and wanted to get it back, so we'll go back there. So now it says draft sent items trash. Now one other thing you may want to change, depending upon how you, and I'm just clicking back here to get back to the uh, main mail and contact screen, is if you scroll all the way down, all the way down, you'll see here the signature option. And when you tap that, uh, usually what it says here under signature is sent from my iPhone. That's what it says by default unless you've changed it. 
Uh, personally, I don't like that. I, I, one of the things I believe in is when you work from anywhere and you work in the anywhere office, that it shouldn't matter where you are. I could be sending this mail from the beach, from a boat, from the airport, from a coffee shop. Uh, as long as I'm sending mail and receiving mail and have access to my data, then it shouldn't matter to anybody where I'm actually working from. So I actually tap the clear button which you'll see up here in the upper right, and clear that signature out. Or maybe you'd put a business signature uh, in there, maybe with your email address and your, your website address. Uh, if, however, you want people to know that you're mobile when you're responding to them, if you're on your iPhone, then you can leave that message in there. Uh, but that's where you find that. Again, it's under the main uh, mail and contact setting, and you just scroll all the way down to the bottom where it says signature. Also, this is where you choose the default account, and right now we only have one, philiptheanywhereoffice.com, that I want it to be sending mail from. So there you go. And those are the final steps to do a complete synchronization between your iPhone mail and your Gmail. Now, when I go in my mail, everything should be fine. But now when I click the Compose button, and you won't see it right here, but I'm just going to show you. I'm going to send a message to one of my other addresses that also comes into philipmonteroconsulting.com. And the subject here, I'll say test message using domain. Test. And I'm going to click send. And off the message will go. And then I'll show you when I log into my Gmail account and I actually check that message from Gmail, how you'll see that the from address does not show philmontero at gmail.com, but instead it shows phil at the anywhereoffice.com. Okay, just to show you that the configuration on the iPhone worked, that I am sending mail from my domain name rather than my Gmail address, here's the message I sent out. Uh, the from says Phil Montero, test message using domain, just like we typed in. I'm going to click on that. Now, you don't initially see it here. It just says it's from Phil Montero. But if I hover over that or if I click, better yet, clicking show details right here, it expands. And you see it says from Phil Montero, phil at the anywhereoffice.com. It does not say Phil Montero at gmail.com, which is what it would say if I was using my uh, my own uh, Gmail account instead. So as you can see, the uh, the configuration steps worked. And so that will allow you and other people get your mail uh, from your iPhone. Uh, even though you're going through Gmail, it will look as though it's coming from your own domain. So that's it. Uh, it it's, it's kind of an involved process. There's a lot of steps and there's that tricky part where you have to back out and then go back in and change the settings. Uh, and it took me a while to figure out how to do this properly and I had to do a lot of searching on Google and a lot of testing but uh, but those are the steps and if you do that then you will be able to send mail um, from your iPhone and it will seamlessly come from your domain so uh, so I think that's what most people probably want to be able to do because it lends to more professionalism and allows you to brand yourself better so um, so there you go for more video tips and pointers and articles on working from anywhere and a lot more iPhone and iPod touch tips to come uh, please come by the anywhereoffice.com Phil Montero see you there Thank <laughs> you.